Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Gutenberg. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Let's continue the building of our custom block. So what we did the last time, we simply registered the block, we specify a bunch of default options, and then we left all the other sections as placeholders completely empty. So now let's take a look on how to actually create our first block inside the editor. In order to print uh, some custom element, whatever, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever we want to do inside the editor of WordPress, we need to use the edit method. So if we access our post editor, all these stuff are generated within that specific block inside the edit method. Let's actually delete pretty much everything because I want to start with a completely empty page. So this is the title, test page, perfect, update. This is now completely empty, fantastic. Okay, in our code editor, inside the edit method, we can simply start by returning a div, an empty div, or actually an empty paragraph with a custom text. And this is gonna be kind of confusing if you're not used to the syntax. The syntax used by Gutenberg is JSX, which is kind of like kind of a mess, but slowly you will get used to it. Hopefully uh, the beginning is going to be kind of confusing. So we need to return a div. In order to return it, we don't need to wrap it inside single quotes or backticks or anything. Just simply write your div and then write your um, hello world, whatever, and then a semicolon at the end. Perfect. Now we have our first custom element, our block that returns a simple hello word. If we go back in our administration area, we refresh. If we search now for our call to action, uh, all of a sudden it doesn't exist anymore. It disappeared. That's because we are having a problem in our JavaScript. If you open our console here, you're going to get an error message, syntax error, expected expression. Instead, we got smaller than sign. That's because we're using a syntax that our browser cannot recognize. As I said before, we're using a J JSX syntax, which is a syntax that it's available from ES6 and above and going beyond, like it's not available for an ES5 point of view. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's basically the JavaScript version that a browser can run, if we can put it that simply. But if we look at the documentation of Gutenberg related to writing your first block, you can get an idea of the different way of writing JavaScript. So if we scroll down to the registering the block section, we're going to have an example of code that it's pretty identical to what we're doing right now. We define a couple of constants, we're using the register block type, and here we have our edit and save method. They are returning some HTML plus some uh, uh, JavaScript variables, JavaScript objects only in line. If we switch to the ES5 version, which is the version that every browser can run, so it doesn't need any compiling, bundling, or anything else in order to run in Chrome, Firefox, whatever other browser you're using, you can see that the syntax is slightly different. And actually the syntax is a bit worse because first we need to open a nameless function inside and we need to pass the blocks and the elements instead of registering the block from uh, importing the blocks from a library. And then we need to use Use the regist block inside the blocks and then every time we use a method instead of simply returning the HTML and writing simple HTML with the JavaScript parts inside curly brackets here we need to return an element we need to specify which element is this is basically an object we need to specify custom styling and the content as you can see it's way less readable than the actual ES next or whatever new version of JavaScript is available. This is way more readable and way easier to write. So in order to allow us to use this type of coding convention, we need to actually use an NPM package to compile and build our JavaScript and let the browser actually read that JavaScript. 
If you have no idea what NPM is, I suggest you to check my introduction to Gulp series where I show how to generate your first package.json file, a quick introduction on NPM on how to install, download some specific packages and how to compile properly your JavaScript from a modern version like ES6 or ESNext into something more readable for the browser. Because I'm using the 2019 theme of WordPress, I already have a package.json file here. If you're not using this theme, you're using your custom theme or you're building a specific plugin with just this custom block, you can simply follow the Gulp series to initialize your own package.json file. But what we have to do here, basically we need to download another WordPress package from the WordPress dev dependency and generate a new script in order to build our own custom JavaScript. Because right now what we have here is just build the styles and then uh, uh, watches the changes to the styles and that's it. So. Let's do it. First of all, let's open our terminal and in the root directory of our theme, we need to run npm install dash dash save dev dash dash save exact at WordPress forward slash scripts. After doing that, you should have your WordPress scripts currently version 3.1.0 in your package.json. And you should also have this wonderful, massive new folder called node modules, where all the NPM modules were installed locally in your repository, which are necessary in order to run all the NPM scripts and compile and do all the crazy things that we want to do. So now let's update our series of scripts in order for us to use it. So right now here, the convention that we have is build the column and then what we want to build. So yeah, let's actually do it. Let's keep extending this convention. So let's create a new script saying that whenever we type build column scripts, we're going to trigger the command WP dash scripts build. And this WP scripts build command, it's actually coming from the WordPress scripts dev dependency. So now that we have that, we need to update a little bit our file structure because unfortunately this WP scripts build doesn't allow us to specify which JavaScript file to build and compile and where to spit out the compiled version of that file. Automatically just simply recognizes that you should have a index.js in a source directory and then it's going to create an index.js compiled into a build directory. So we should update our project with those two folders. Let's create a new folder called src and inside this folder we're going to move our Gutenberg CTA block.js and we need to rename these into a simple index.js and then we can we need to create another folder called build and that's it. Automatically, whenever we run this script, this index.js will be compiled and put a copy here, a perfectly minified copy inside the build that we can then enqueue in our custom block. So let's give it a try. Let's open our terminal and let's run npm run build column scripts. There you go. Automatically, the npm script recognize our index.js in our source folder and emitted an index.js in the build folder. So if we check the build folder, look what we have here, a new index.js. And this file is just a mess. This is a minified vanilla version of our JSX file, which is this one is absolutely readable by the browser. We don't need to read this. We don't need to edit this one. We're going to always edit the source, but at least we have a um, compiled version of that file that can be read by any browser. So the last thing to do is to actually update our gunaber.php where we register our script, the custom CTAJS inside the editor script and actually pointing to the new build index.js because this file is the one that it's going to work. So we can specify the build folder and then the index.js. Let's save it. Let's go back in our administration area. If we refresh, we're not going to have the console log error anymore. And if we type 
call to action. I actually is already here because I used it a couple of times. So if we click on call to action, look what we have here, our custom edit section with the hello word. Of course, this block is not editable. We didn't put any logic in it, but at least it's printing what we want. And we can double check that it's actually working. So if we go back inside our index.js in the source folder, let's remember we don't need to touch the one in the build. This is completely useless for us. We can update these instead of hello world. We can say something else. If we save, we open our terminal, we trigger again npm run build scripts. Everything was built. We go back in our administration area, we refresh and then trigger again call to action. Now it's something else. Okay. So everything is working, but of course it's a bit tedious as you notice, because every time I change something, then I have to open my terminal and trigger again the command npm run build. Do it once, do it twice, it's totally fine. But while developing a complex Gutenberg block, we don't want to constantly open the terminal and trigger the build command. That's why WordPress offers a watcher, a start command or something that runs in the background and automatically checks if the file is updated, is getting updated or is saved, something changed, it automatically triggers the build script in order to speed out the new compiled version for us. We need to generate that command and we need to actually define that npm command inside our package.json. So we can uh, write something right after the watch. We can uh, call it something like start dash build, something like that. Of course, you can name this command however you want, something that it's easy for you to remember. And the command that we want to trigger is also coming from the WP scripts, but this time the command it's called start. Actually, the script is called start. Perfect. Let's give it a try. So let's open our terminal. We do npm run start dash build. Perfect. Now everything is compiling, but as you can see, I cannot write it in the terminal. This window of the terminal, it's busy. There's a session is blocked by the start command, which is running in background and it's listening to any change I do to the index.js. We also have a map file that if you don't know what it is, once again, check the Gulp series and you will learn everything that you need. But now if I do whatever I want, for example, I convert this into a paragraph and I say that this is edited, something like that. I save it in the terminal. This script was run again. I don't have to run my script. I just simply refresh the page and add once again a call to action. And now I have the edited version. Perfect. So automatically this script is running, recognizing any changes and compiling our build index.js file. To interrupt the execution of the script, we can press on our keyboard control and C. Well, there you go. Now we have everything in place in order for us to actually code our custom block and compile the JavaScript properly and use a way better and more modern approach in writing JavaScript. And from next lesson, we are going to actually code something more interesting than just setting things up in order for us to code. I know it's a bit convoluted, but that's the way Gutenberg is, unfortunately. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.